Oh, another ruined brush. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> I wanted to invite you into my studio today because I just wanted to share a little bit about what I've learned about brush care and taking care of your paints. You know, when you start off as, you know, an artist and playing with acrylics, it is so exciting to dip your brush into the paint and to get creative on the canvas. But as you probably know by now, life happens to all of us. The phone rings or somebody's at the door and you put your brush down that still has paint on it. And by the time you get back to it an hour or so later, this is what happens. A total ruined brush. So I want to just remind you that acrylic paint has a, a plastic binder in it. So this is what makes it such a phenomenal medium to work in. Uh, but while it's wet, it is pliable and you can apply it to the canvas. And as long as the bristles keep moving and there's still moisture in the brush, the paint won't dry. But the minute that acrylic paint dries, this plastic binder that is found in the medium literally solidifies and there is nothing you can do to take this off. You can scrape it off, but this brush is ready for the bin. So if you want to save money, there is something that I would like to teach you today. And if you can make that part of your practice from day one, I promise you it's going to save you a lot of money and a lot of frustration. So when I started with my acrylic painting course and my training as a creatively fit coach, I didn't have a lot of money. So you don't have to spend thousands of rands on brushes. I really just bought these very cheap brushes from the art store. I think I got a whole set for like 20 rand. And they are still in my studio three days later. But I promise you what just happened to that brush I showed you and I kept it for a reason happened to me and my husband over and over and over again during the first part of our training because we kept forgetting to rinse our brushes and to clean it properly at the end of each session. So before you start investing in expensive brushes that can cost you 150 Rand a brush or even more, I really suggest that you take the time to form a habit in your studio as far as your brushes and your paints is concerned. And I would just like to share some tips with you. So the very first thing that you will need um, in your studio is, of course, a tub of water. So I literally recycle. I don't go buy stuff if I don't need to. So this is an old paint tub that uh, I got. It I don't even remember what paint was in there, but my water is in here. And I make a very, very good habit of it, or a regular habit of it, to rinse my brushes. And um, as I'm painting, if I switch to another brush, I rinse the brush that I used out thoroughly. So that literally means taking the brush, putting it in your water, and I want to hear this. So you really want to mop the bottom of the, of the container to really get all the paint out. And then what I do is if I'm still painting and I'm going to go back to it, I can leave this brush in the water for a while just to prevent it from drying out and me doing a proper care. Um, so that will already save you a lot of money on brushes because you are taking care of your brushes as you are working with them. So don't go into the bad habit of putting a brush down without rinsing the paint out of the bristles. Another very important lesson that I've learned is if you keep your brushes in the water overnight, what is going to happen is this um, clamping part or the metal part of your brush is going to, the glue will dissolve, it's going to pull off and then you can literally pull the handle out and your bristles can also be deformed. 
because even though your brush is in the water and there might still be paint on it that paint at some stage even though it doesn't dry in the water it does clump around the hair and then you find brushes that has a funny little bend to it or a funny little opening and as you're trying to work it becomes very frustrating because the brush isn't doing what you want it to do one of the major breakthroughs that i had in my art and trust me my art didn't always look like this was when i understood that the artist is only as good as its tools so if you have good quality tools and you have good good quality paints and you take care of it the result of your brush strokes and the result of your work will be apparent if you use inferior products and inferior brushes and you don't even bother to take care of them i promise you it's going to add to that frustration during your painting practice at that stage when it's the ugly face and then to get frustrated with brushes and, and inferior quality materials is just going to, you know, maybe push you to the edge. And the one thing that we don't want is for you to give up. Okay, so another good tip that I can give you is to always have a bit of a rag, a rag here handy. So this is one of my, sorry, one of my other thingies. I literally always have a bit of a rag so in between um, my rinses what I do is if I don't want that much water in the brush I literally just dab the water off the brush and uh, that gives me a bit of a drier brush in order to dip it into a different color so that we don't create mud on the canvas so you also don't need a lot of brushes um, I literally upgraded my set of brushes for this Tora painting course I just did with Whitney and I think I spent about 300 Rand on a set of brushes from Montmartre and this is my biggest um, acrylic brush now and I've been painting a lot with it and you can see I've just taken it out of my um, container and the bristles is soft it's shiny and it's loose and it is because after every painting session, I take all the brushes I used and I go to the basin and I rinse them thoroughly under running water. What sometimes happens with your brushes, I'm going to put this down, is that you, you accumulate um, a lot of paint here in the hilt, uh, in the base of the brush. And what happens is if you just rinse it and you basically just get water in the front part or the tip of the brush, what happens is that the old paint in the front there hardens and eventually your brush feels like a permanent marker. It's the stiff hard thing and it really becomes very difficult to have uh, movement in, when you apply brush and have proper brush strokes. So it really is important and it's going to save you a lot of money if you spend one minute after your painting session ends to really go and clean up properly and never ever leave a brush in the water overnight. Like I've said, I've wasted and lost so many brushes during the beginning phase of my training that um, if I think of all that money I could have saved and spent it on canvas and paint rather than replacing brushes every week. So that is a, a tip I can give you. So start with cheaper brushes until you can get this practice in um, your sort of habit zone and then you can upgrade to more expensive brushes as your practice improves and as you know that you will take care of the equipment and the materials that you invest a lot of money in. So speaking of which, I just wanted to share some of my tips with you as far as saving paint is concerned. So. I work on these very cheap little meat trays that I buy at, uh, at, bought at a plastic store um, in my valley. And I think I paint Rand ninety-nine for 10 of these trays. And um, so I know what it feels like to dispense paint on there. And again, you get to the end of your painting session or the phone rings or you have to go to town and you know by the time you come back all this paint is going to be dry and unusable so you just keep adding another layer so one of the tips that i can give you 
is to find a plastic container that your little tray will fit in. So at the end of your painting session, you can put it in a plastic tray and you can give it a misting with a water bottle like so. Just so that there's a bit of water on the top surface. And then you just take a lid and you seal it completely. And ta-da! Your little tray is inside a plastic container. It is sealed. And what will happen is that your paint won't dry out. So tomorrow morning when you're ready uh, for your next session, you literally just open up your container. And there you have fresh paint to carry on painting. And that will also save a dollar um, or a rand or whatever money you are working in because paint can be quite expensive especially if you start to invest in the good stuff so if you've dispensed a little bit too much paint um, another thing I can also say is maybe just to put a, bit, a, a sheet of cling wrap over it if there's a lot of paint on there um, but I do find that sealing it in a plastic container like this overnight with a bit of a misting of water um, your paint will be perfect to work for your next session and that uh, really will save you a lot of money um, in wasting paint so I hope that these tips uh, will be helpful to you just to be aware because nobody taught me these things when I got started and I had to learn these things the hard way so save money on brushes and on paint by taking care of what you have and uh, that little bit of routine and a good habit will save you a lot of money so i hope this little tip was helpful helpful to you sorry so if you thought that this was helpful and interesting please subscribe to my channel and uh, there's also some links below that you can follow to my website and also to my teachable platform where i offer training in watercolor and in the future some acrylic painting as well and if you haven't heard about my Facebook group, Painting Made Easy, uh, please search for it on Facebook and you will find us there. It is a beautiful community where I share some of these tips and we as a community share with each other as far as our painting practices is concerned. And uh, I offer some tips and, and education and guidance on that group all for free. So I hope to see you very soon. Enjoy your painting practice and take care of those brushes and your color. Be absolutely colorful. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.